Here's another project, a stack of 16 millimeter negative film, mostly regular 16, some super 16, which I'd love to transfer to 4K video for future use. That's a lot of film. And if I sent it to a conventional transfer house, it would cost a fortune. Just like I did for my 35mm and Super 8 archives, I have to build a do-it-yourself system. In the past, I used either a projector or a film camera as the basis of my transfer systems. I've looked around at different 16mm projectors, but I wanted something that would handle the film gently, but also be really steady. I then started looking at cameras. There are some great 16mm movements out there, but using a camera as the basis of a transfer system has a couple of problems. First, most are designed for only 400-foot reels, and the few that handle 1,200-foot reels are really hard to find. Second, Unlike the 35mm system I built, there's just not a lot of room for a light system in a 16mm camera. Probably the best suited would be the Airflex 16M. It's got a great film movement and lots of space behind the gate. The problem is I'd hate to cannibalize a working camera, since they get more difficult to find each year. Also, because of the resurgence of film in general, they've become very pricey. My solution was to find an Aeroflex 16 film movement removed from a junk camera. I think I paid about $200 for it. It's a thing of engineering beauty. With each turn of the main shaft, the claw engages the film and pulls it down to the next frame. When positioned, a precision registration pin holds the film exactly in place as the exposure would have been taken. In my case, though, this is when each frame will be recorded on digital. Okay, so far so good. I have a way to position and steady the film, but there are two major things I need to do in order to make this a transfer system. One, I'd like to be able to transfer Super 16 as well as regular 16. And this gate is definitely regular 16. The second is an even bigger problem. I need to make a hole in both the pressure plate and its holder for light to pass through and illuminate the film. Since the whole success of this project rests on these modifications and they're a bit involved, I thought I would break this out into a multi-part video. First, let me give you an overview of what I have in mind. I'd like to build the unit flat on a single sheet of metal. Up here, I'll mount two 16mm, 1200-foot editing reels. The tops screw off so the film will drop in easily. Usually, negative film has a plastic core in the center. The left reel supplies the film, and the right takes it up. The take-up reel has to have some sort of motor attached. I have a supply and take-up spindle from an old Aeroflex 16 magazine. These have built-in clutches to regulate the pulling tension. They also conveniently have gears already integrated for rotating them. The modified film movement will go here. I plan on using a motor to spin the main shaft and a mechanical switch that activates the digital camera for each frame as the shaft spins around. The light source goes on this side, probably an LED of some sort. The digital camera goes here. I'd like to use a full frame 6000 by 4000 pixel camera. I don't anticipate shooting more than 1 to 2 frames per second, so I'll probably try to record raw files as I did on the 35mm system. There's most likely going to be some film rollers and maybe a spring tension device for the take-up reel, these will smooth out the film motion as it moves. I want to keep it simple, though. So that's the plan. Will it work? Well, I hope so. I might take a few wrong turns, but hopefully I'll get there in the end. Let's start with the film movement. Other than a small drill press, some small metric screw taps and screws, 
and a set of jewelry polishing tips. The only other thing I needed was these small files. I got a regular steel set and a diamond set. I think they were only about 20 bucks on Amazon. I wanted the diamond set because I wasn't sure how difficult it would be to grind out the hard steel of the airy gate. First thing is removing the pressure pad. There's a screw on each end. If you slide the pressure pad off its backing, you'll notice that there's a long metal spring attached to the middle of the pad with two screws. Unfortunately, to make a sufficient size hole, I'll need to lose this spring entirely. The problem is the pressure pad will still need to have some type of spring pressure behind it. I figured I'd get to that after I cut out everything for the light hole. I took the pressure pad and wrapped it thoroughly with gaffer's tape, exposing only the area I wanted to carve out. Obviously, if you have some access to a machine shop and milling equipment, you don't need to do this by hand. For Super 16, I needed to grind out on the side opposite the perforation. I first drilled a couple of starting holes in the area I wanted to cut out. Now the files. It took a bit of careful filing, but eventually I got the opening I wanted. I thoroughly rinsed the whole pad with water, before removing the tape to reduce the chances of any small bits of metal scratching the polished surfaces. I didn't record it, but I used the polishing bits to really smooth out the edges. I then ran a new razor over it, to make sure there's no burrs I couldn't see. Now it's time to do the same thing for the actual gate. To remove the gate, I needed to take off the side rail. After removing the multiple screws and jiggling the movement, the gate finally came out. Again, the same process. Tape, file, rinse, and polish. I went as far out as I could with the grinding without weakening that side of the gate. To get enough light through the pressure pad backing, I had to go all the way to the edge, forming a C-shaped cutout. I think this piece is made from brass, so it was a lot easier to cut. Unfortunately, cutting the center out also meant losing the little latch handle to open and close the gate, another problem to solve. First, the spring tension problem. The ARRI 2C has several small springs located behind its pressure pad, each positioned around a short screw. I thought I'd try that method. I tapped two holes in the pressure pad backing and found two short springs. The tricky part is getting the pressure pad over the backing without dislocating the springs. This produced decent spring tension for the pad. Not quite as much as the original metal spring bracket, but I guess we'll see if it works. At one to two frames per second, I'd hope that the pressure from the pad didn't need to be as high. Now, all I need is a way to keep the pressure pad closed. My first design used two metal pieces on the top and bottom of the pressure pad backing, and clips made from the discarded spring that was under the pad. This worked, but there were two problems. I still had no way to easily open and close the door, and eventually the clips broke from the tension. Back to the drawing board. Looking around, I found this. I think it was a bracket that held lines or shades to a window. At any rate, I thought the extension would make a good little handle, and instead of two pieces, I could cut and grind this into a single stronger and more stable latch piece. Now I need a better clip. Then it hit me, or should I say it was a stroke of genius. The clip on these pens is amazingly solid, strong, and just the right shape. With a little drilling and cutting, they worked perfectly to hold the pressure pads securely on the gate. So that's that. A piece of test film confirms that everything is moving freely and without scratching or bumping. I'll have part two in a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, if you enjoyed this video, 
please give it a thumbs up. And please remember to hit subscribe.